We're back on Boyne B 464 And, Gerald, would you give your website, please? Because I want people to be able to go up and buy your books or do whatever. It's my full name, Gerald Blumenthal, G-E-R-A-L-D, Blumenthal, B-L-U-M-E-N-T-H-A-L.com. All one word, GeraldBlumenthal.com. Did anybody ever tell you that you have a great accent? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you do, I know, before we start talking about the new book, is you do impressions. Am I correct? I do. Yes, you do. <laughs> And one of the one of the ones that I love to listen to is um, Inspector Clouseau. Can you do that for us, please? I can do that. Okay. I may not win a Nobel Prize That's for doing right. it, but That's all right. I can do that. That's all right. Uh, the story I think about. Uh, actually, it, it comes from Peter Sellers. He, I was a great fan of Peter Sellers, so not as a human being, but as an actor. Uh, and he did some wonderful character roles. And uh, the one I remember about Clouseau, Clouseau walks into a hotel that has just been robbed. And he's unaware that it's still being robbed when he's standing in the front, uh, by the front desk. And he's about to talk to the clerk when he hears this... <laughs> And he looks down, and he sees this enormous dog. Oh, my gosh. So he turns to the man standing next to the dog, and he says, Monsieur, does your dog bite? <laughs> so the guy says, no. So he turns back to the clerk, and as he does so, the dog bites him. Well, now he's enraged. He turns back to the man. He said, you tell me that your dog does not bite. So the man says, but that is not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> now, you also do an Indian impression that I think is pretty cool. Can you do that one for us? I can. Well, I have to preface it a little bit. I, okay. I was in a, a competition, one, a Toastmaster competition, where I had to do Indian accents. And I walked into the hall. There were maybe 200, 300 people. I saw a lot of Indians there, and I, I felt so self-conscious doing it. But I did it, and um, one of the things I said was, uh, please stick out your tongue, put it away, please. And one of the Indian uh, in the audience came up to me, and I thought he was angry with me, but he said to me, where are you from? And I said, why do you ask? He said, where did you learn to speak Indian like that? I said, I said why do you ask? He says, man, you speak Indian better than I do. <laughs> And that's true. Do you love doing impressions? I do. I, I think I have a secret. Uh, I've always had a secret wish to do stand-up comedy, but haven't really been that successful do at it. Do you want to come and try it in Cincinnati? We have a wonderful comedy club. Uh, I think they'd have to see me first. Really? Yes. You think? Yeah. Wow. Above, I... above the waist. Above the waist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of... Com comedians that, you know, started out just like you. Remember Phyllis Jeller? Yes, yeah, sure. She's absolutely awesome. And I think Joan Rivers is really doing a comedy act on her face. Have you noticed it? In the commercial she's doing with the car company? You have to watch that one. Because she talks about it. her face not moving, basically, and yes. she also talks about not remembering where she lives. So, anyhow... Um, Tell me about this third series of books, because it's another genre. Yes, I am. Um, this book is called uh, The Adventures of Lauren Bloom, Teen Detective. And it centers around my daughter. Um, although she had no aspirations of becoming a, a detective, I made her so. And, and the story is about a very famous... Houstonian detective whose name was Lawrence Bloom and he was killed um, by a murderer two days before Lauren was born and uh, she only found out in depth about his life ten years later. Mm -hmm. The mother named her L Lauren after Lawrence, mm. her husband. Mm -hmm. And from that time onwards, when she was already ten years old or so, she 
took a very strong interest in her father's history and mm -hmm. there was a little office at the back of their apartment that she'd never been into and she saw all the paraphernalia, how he solved cases and what have mm -hmm. you. And uh, it, it became very intriguing to her. And then she read books uh, like Sherlock Holmes and that really grabbed her attention. Eventually, uh, she goes out and she solves cold cases. Now, every one of these cold cases uh, is in a separate chapter in the book. Oh, wow. And she solves every one. But I have to be honest, every case is factual. Not that she solved it, but there are real-life uh, factual uh, cold cases that were solved. Well, you know, it's amazing because you use your handwriting analysis in every one of your books. Am I right? Correct. Now, how did you bring handwriting analysis in, into this book? Well, in, in one case, um, a woman and her uh, two daughters were found murdered. They were found drowned off a marina in uh, uh, Miami. Mm -hmm. They had no idea who they were, but they did find a vehicle parked at the marina mm -hmm. that obviously belonged to them, they found out later, uh, when they identified the car. And the only clue as to why they were there was a little piece of paper that had written on it, uh, Marina Number 5, meet you at 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. And uh, that was obviously written by one of the victims or by the perpetrator. Well, they went and checked the handwriting of the uh, victims and none of it matched that piece of paper. Oh, wow. So they knew straight away that the murderer had written directions how to get the marina. The question is, okay, you know the handwriting, you know the personality of the handwriting, but you don't know who the person is. So they had the bright idea uh, of enlarging the sample of handwriting and putting it on, on several billboards around Miami. Oh, wow. And they said, does anybody recognize this? And one old lady called up and she said, I recognize it. That is the handwriting of my handyman. Of course, they didn't believe her at first, but they went to that. She had a receipt from the handyman, and the, there was this, a, something called a felon's claw, which is very uh, prominent among serial killers. Really? It's called a felon's claw, and it was in that sample and in the writing on that piece of paper, and they caught the guy. Wow, that's unbelievable. Uh, you know, one of the things that I wonder when you do your research, how long does it usually take you to do the research and then put it to paper? Well, it's an ongoing thing. Uh, what I do, I, I have my own business, so I always feel guilty about working on my book during uh, normal working hours. So I go to work very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I spend at least two hours every morning writing up in a book. And researching at the same time. I may research at night and come up with ideas, but eventually when I find something which really grabs me, I can write about it. And then uh, originally when I wrote the book, it wasn't in the first person. But then my dear wife pointed out that it would be a good idea to make the protagonist speak in a first person, uh -huh. which I did. I had to change everything. Instead of said, he said, it said, I said. Uh -huh. And that changed the whole uh, tenor of the of their book. Now, this is similar in a sense to like Nancy Drew because you're going to do it as a series, right? Do you see yourself doing like Nancy Drew all the different books that she did? I hope so. And so where are you getting your material for her cases? Well, the internet is a wonderful source. Mm -hmm. uh, my son-in-law is a wonderful source. And I actually have the advantage that I can go to court and actually watch these trials. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, and it gives me a real feel for what goes on in court. That was specially evident in the monkey trial. Wow. Do you know, you could actually do television all the time as one of those guys, right? They have a lot of women that are doing that they go and they watch trials. The and one they, is an uh, ex-prosecutor yeah. from Houston. Nancy Grace? No, well, Nancy Grace is on TV. This one right. is uh, Kelly Siegler. Kelly Siegler. It's have called Cold Case. No. No. She's this high. That high? Mm. Well, is she on television? There, There's a prosecutor and there's an inspector. Is that what you're talking about? No, she's a, a, an analyst of some kind. Oh, okay. It's, it's called Cold Case. All right. And, and that's a pretty Very good, good, by the really way. Really good. So we need to take a short break, and we'll be right back with Jerry Blumenthal. Can you give your website, please? 
GeraldBlumenthal.com, G-E-R-A-L-D-B-L-U-M-E-N-T-H-A-L, one word, dot com. And we'll be right back on Catherine Rager's Born Before 64.